Hello, one away class. Mr. McHugh back here with you for our whiteboard video number 16. And what I'd like to talk about is the chapter 8 table that I posted here that you now can uh, get the PDF file from our course tools shared documents and um, use that to help you with simplifying radicals out of section 8.2. Okay, so what I like about our community of math learners is a couple semesters ago, um, my math lab was, was showing the need to have some tool to help out with breaking down these radicals so you could pull out perfect square roots or perfect cube roots. And so I had a couple students work with me, about, it was about a year ago, and they came up with a simple Excel table and I've created a copy of it for you to a PDF file so that you can print it out. So, you know, what it looks like is this table right here. And when I do these examples here, I broke down here, here's the excuse me, square root table and uh, I'm going the wrong way and below it sorry I'm trying to get in the camera and is the uh, below right here is the cube root table this is the one I'm going to use for the examples here okay so the one the other ones over here fourth root and fifth root you probably aren't going to need them too much but we included them just to fill out the paper just in case you get a crazy problem in my math lab okay so here here's the idea <clears throat> You have a situation here, I just made these examples up to illustrate how you're going to use them, and you need to take the cube root of 125. Okay, now, that one's a fairly easy to get started with, but what you want to do here is, here, let me come over here for a second so you can see me. Come over here is you go, what times itself three times will equal 125? Okay, now, what I want you to do here is use that lower right-hand corner cube root table and go across, and the big thing I want to explain is what's going on. X represents a number, uh, 1 through 10, I think I used, 1 through 9, 1 through 10. And if you take 2 and you cube it, you get 8. Does everybody kind of see that? You take, you take 4 and you cube it, you get 64. Now, these are fairly easy ones. You, you probably know a lot of these, but 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216. Okay, so hopefully look at a table and understand what the top two rows are about. Going down the left-hand vertical column was to take the result of something cubed, like two cubed is eight, and then turn around and start using that cube root and multiply it by itself. Eight times eight is eight. Eight times two is what? 16. Eight times three is 24. Eight times four is 32. Okay. And so now what you're going to do is use this in reverse order. So here's the story. You come up here to example, we know the cube root of 125 is 5. How would you use that? I would look into the cube root table. When I would find the 125, I'd see it here. I'd realize um, the 5 is the x multiplied by itself three times is 125. That would be the answer. Okay, now over here, look at example B. What is the cube root of 375? Okay, now. If you don't have the table, you've got to go and try to pull out perfect cube roots, okay? Now, um, my math lab with cloning, the, the guys and gals who made these, they went kind of crazy with these. So hopefully what you'll do now, take advantage of the table and make life easy for you. Go into the cube root table, find 375. Where is it? It's under the column with x is 5, and it's multiplied by 3 times. That's how you read that. It's 125 times 3 is 375. Okay, now now that you know that, what you're going to do is break break apart factoring. 375 is going to be the cube root of 125 times the cube root of 3. 125 times 3 is 375. Now, with that simple powerful information, you now know the cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of 3 is, you have to leave it alone. Nothing you can do with that. Okay, so that's the idea. I'm hoping I'm helping you out here a little bit. Um, let's try one more example here. Um, I, I'm focusing on this, this column here so that uh, for the ease of understanding. So um, let's take the cube root of 500 for our third example. And you go, well, how do I use the table again? Go to the lower right hand corner, find the cube root. Look through the table and five, 500. There it is. Look what it's noticed with. It was four times the base, the base cube of 125. So I'm going to break it down into 125 times 4. Look at that. I forgot to put the cube on there. 
Make sure you put the, th the cubed. The index is three with cube roots. That is a common mistake to make, class. I, you gotta keep putting those threes on there because you, if I wouldn't have done that, what's the, what, what does this look like? This looks like I'm writing the square root of four, and I would have wrote, and I would have wrote a two here. Okay, so watch that. So question now is you broke down 500 into 125 times four. You know the cube root of 125 is five, and the cube root of four is not a perfect cube root, so therefore you leave it there. Okay, so I'm hoping here that uh, this couple minute to uh, five minute uh, whiteboard demo will help you understand how to use a table and oops and uh, help you out. Sorry, I walked out of the screen, and um, it'll make it easier for you. Okay, Mr. McHugh, I'm going to sign off here. We've done uh, whiteboard video number 16, so keep working hard, and I'll see you around. Okay, bye.